Today, I will be discussing the clinical technologist. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Nursing with Ingrid. Thank you very much for stopping by yet once more. I absolutely appreciate it. Thank you also for the support that I'm getting on my channel. I absolutely, absolutely appreciate it. As you can see, I am in the process of really going through a few options with regards to health care outside of being a medical doctor or being a nurse and just widening the, the the scope or exposure to all the other professions that are available within the healthcare environment and fall under the health sciences remember all the links that i will uh, mention are down below and you can take a look at that at the end of this video what are clinical technologists? Clinical technologists are people or professionals that are absolutely invested and concerned with the human body. And what they do is they use equipment and procedures, very specialized, very uh, sophisticated equipment and procedures to treat patients and also to do some corrective surgeries or corrective treatment with regards to some conditions that patients may have. You will also find them in uh, the hospitals. You will find them associated with specialists in private practice, or you will find them as individuals that are self-employed that provide a service. What are the Mm, what are the specialities that you can go into when you're becoming a clinical technologist? You have the cardiology space and that has got everything to do with diagnosing um, cardiac disease and you will find these individuals in association or in tandem with cardiologists in the cat labs and within the EP labs and stuff like that, okay? You will also find t uh, clinical technologists that are within the cardiovascular space and these individuals or these professionals are the ones that are in open heart surgery with the bypass machines and they specialize in that specific arena within the cardiac surgery space. You will also find clinical technologists within the critical care space and in this instance, these professionals are um, in your ICUs and they deal with your ventilators, with your intubation equipment and all that sophisticated stuff within the uh, ICU space. Or you will find them in theatre as assistants to anesthesiologists within the theatre environment. So they fall under the critical care banner. You also have clinical technologists that are within the nephrology um, environment and these individuals or these practitioners are more um, specifically specialized in dialysis, dialysis equipment, dialysis, um, everything to do with renal care, renal disease. So those are the ones that you will find in the nephrology space. The next type of clinical technologists are the ones that are within the neurophysiology space. Now, for me personally, I appreciate these individuals because I am a neuroscrub sister by profession. And what the neurophysiologist does is that they are able to diagnose and detect um, peripheral and central nerve disease. They are also very valuable within the theater space where um, cranial nerves are involved or where spinal nerves are involved. So they are there to also preserve um, um, certain parts of the anatomy and make sure that the patient comes out with full functionality or the same level of functionality they came into theater with that is the same uh, functionality that they, will, that they will come out of theater with. So in the neurophysiology space there is such a great need for uh, clinical technologists and these the, um, I for me, I'm being biased at the moment, but I appreciate um, these individuals more because I've seen 
the outcomes that are um, produced when they are involved within a procedure, within surgery, within um, correcting, di detecting and stuff like that. And you will not only find the neurophysiologist in the neuro theatres, you will find them in the ENT theatres as well as, as in the um, plastic surgery theatres. So they are basically there to preserve the nerves and to monitor the nerve activity within the procedure and uh, alert the doctors or alert the surgeons that uh, no they don't need to go there because that is they're close to a nerve and they may damage the nerve which will complicate the case the next space where you will find clinical technologists is in the pulmonology space and these individuals are more um, focused or specialized within the the lungs and the breathing and all the lung diseases and they also fall part of the speciality of, of um, a lung disease and you will find them in your specialist uh, rooms or practice as well as you will find them in the hospital in general so what type of personality is needed in order for you to consider being a clinical technologist? Number one, you have to be somebody that is very, very compassionate. You have to be somebody that is also passionate about patient care or passionate about human beings in general. Another attribute that is very important is that you need to be able to be, you need to be somebody that is very focused and can concentrate for long hours um, at a time because of the intensity of the work that you do. You also need to be somebody that is able or is willing to be challenged, stretched and pulled within your profession or within the sphere that you've decided to specialize in. You must also be a team player and a very strong team player at that because as a clinical technologist, most of us as nurses and doctors, we actually depend on your technology and your sophisticated equipment to bring out the best outcomes that we are hoping for for every patient. As a clinical technologist, you also have to be somebody that is emotionally strong because of the fact that whatever you do is within the critical space and you need to be able to be agile and strong enough to react appropriately when um, a critical situation happens, a critical incident happens. You need to be very present and you need to be strong enough to handle it mentally. You also need to be somebody that is very uh, comfortable working under pressure because that is basically your day-to-day -day, um, expectation if you're a clinical technologist. Now we're going to move on to um, what is needed for you to even pursue a career in clinical technology. The clinical technology program is run within your um, universities of technology that is your DUT, TUT and UCT. And it is usually a three-year program and then in your fourth year, you end up doing your BTEC. You do your two years, which is predominantly intensive um, anatomy and physiology and pharmacology. And then in your third year, you have to do something that is called work integrated learning. So that is where you go into your passion, whether it's critical care, whether it's neurophysiology, whether it is cardiology, whether it's cardiovascular. So the, in your third year, that is what you do. You work under supervision of a, a qualified a clinical technologist. So what are the requirements that you need in order to get into the training program? You need a grade 12. And with the grade 12, you need to have pure mathematics, you need to have life sciences, and, you, and or physical science. So those are the criteria that, you, that are needed for you to enter the clinical technology program. So once you are done with your training, you are then registered with the HPCSA, and as well as the the body that you trained in in your third year which was either cardiac um, cardiovascular uh, neurophysiology critical care they also have their in the independent bodies that govern the specific or the specialized units within you work and you practice so basically that is the clinical technologist 
um, in a nutshell and um, it is something that is very very fulfilling I've had a very good experience working with them a very lovely 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 um, a, a profession or something to look at after your grade 12 once you are qualified and you are registered on the HPCSA you will then be able to work in a hospital you will be able to work with um, a specialist doctor in his private practice and you can also be an independent uh, practitioner that does your own work you claim your own hours you have your own rates you have um, everything that you need as an individual private practitioner as well the general salary for entry level after you've done your um, four years or after you've done your three years before you do your BTEC is around 233,000 rands and that is also according to pay scale that is where I got the information from so that is clinical technology in a nutshell and I hope that I was clear enough if you have any questions please put a comment down below if you are a clinical technologist and you've got extra information that you could share on the about this video please feel free to comment down below I would absolutely appreciate that and with that I'd like to say thank you very much for watching this video if you've liked this video please give it a massive thumbs up at this point and I will see you in my next video Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.